Crinkle in Time is a new Disney film that is based off of a best-selling childhood book that I actually have read. I've read this one. I, I was patting myself on the back going into the screening for this movie. Yeah, because I've actually read it. I know what the fuck this movie is about. I know what the fuck the book is about. Having said that, it was a very long time ago when I read that book, and I only remember the beginning and the end. So, it's not going to be much help in this review. But still, still, that's, that's, this, this is progress. This movie is directed by Ava DuVernay, I think is her name. She's the woman who directed Selma from a few years ago. It stars a really talented cast. You've got Oprah Winfrey, you've got Reese Witherspoon, you've got Mindy Cowling, you've got newcomer Storm Reed, who plays the main character Meg. You've got other people like Chris Pine showing up in this thing. Meg is a girl who is very close to her father and her mother. Her father and her mother are scientists focusing on quantum mechanics and tesseract and trans-dimensional warping and all kinds of complicated shit that I really don't know how to explain. And one day her father just d disappears, he just vanishes, he just, he skips out on the child support and he walks away. So four years after her father disappears, Meg and her little brother are visited by these strange magical beings, these three witches played by Oprah Winfrey, Reese Witherspoon, and Mindy Cowling. They're Who's It, What's It, and Mrs. Witch, I think are their names. With the help of these powerful witches, her, her little brother, and this token love interest that shows up in the movie, get transported to this magical land where a whole bunch of crazy unimaginable shit happens and they have to try to combat this weird darkness known as the it not pennywise not the clown he doesn't show up in this movie thank god that would have scared the hell out of a whole bunch of little kids keep in mind for the purposes of this review whether i'm talking about positives or i'm talking about negatives i am going to keep my criticisms and my critiques of this movie strictly about how it's portrayed on film this is one of those rare cases where i do have knowledge from the book to back me up but i feel like the book should be its own separate thing and this is all about how well that book is adapted to the big screen so i'm going to be using film critique instead of book critique for this review. From what I can remember, this movie is pretty faithful to the book. I mean, it, I'm pretty sure it follows most of the plot lines of the book, and it's all about the execution. And here's what I can say about this movie from an execution standpoint. The visuals are sex. Pretty much from a visual and technical standpoint, I have little to no issues with this movie. There is one complaint that I will mention later when I get into my negatives, but for right now, I'll just say that most of the visuals in this movie are eggs on a tit. Eggs on a tit, seriously. I mean, the CGI looks really good in most scenes that it's utilized. The cinematography looks really good. The colors in this movie make everything pop and make everything a little bit more exciting and a little bit more imaginative. There's also great costume design. There's also great makeup. Anything in this movie that looks like it's supposed to appeal to your sense of sight, it, it looks really good. It's really well done. Visually, Ava and her creative visual team should be proud of themselves for the job that they did in this movie. Also single out the main girl, Storm Reed, I believe, who is playing the main character of Meg. You can tell that she's really trying hard. She's given the most to do and she does the most with what she's given and keep your eyes on that girl she's got future star written all over her also does have pretty good messages to kids about looking for that little light inside yourself and for being optimistic and never giving up which is really like a euphemism for <laughs> Dini gave me that same message back in Aladdin, and I get the same message here, but it's a good message for kids to have, so I think that kids will walk out of this movie with that message, and they'll be better for it. All right, and having said all of that, let's carve this turkey up. The best way I can describe this movie and why I'm not really a huge fan of it is that it's all over the place. That's the only way I can describe everything from the tone to even some of the visuals, to the narrative, to the characters, to the dialogue, to the acting, to everything. It's all over the place. This movie's a mess. Start with the acting. I know the tone that the movie is going for. The movie's going for a balanced tone. It's going for that kid humor, that heart humor that we know and love, but it's also going for more serious things. It's going for some more mature things. And it's supposed to be striking a grounded, somewhat balanced tone. And the acting in the movie does not reflect that tone. The acting in this movie is all over the place in terms of whose performance I can believe in and whose performance I just can't buy. The acting is way over the top, even for a movie like this. I mean, I can understand how contextually speaking, the acting would fit in a scene like that. Then you've got other scenes where you've got people that are underacting, and you've got people that feel a little bit stiff and a little bit wooden, and some of those performances come off as, hey, we know we're acting, let's just rehearse our lines and get them out so that we can go home and cash this check. You have acting that is that inconsistent in this movie when it's all over the place in terms of too over the top or too under the ground. It takes me out of the movie as a viewer and it makes it hard for me to connect to the actors and what they're trying to pull off on screen. And that inconsistent quality also carries over to the dialogue. There's some shitty, iffy dialogue that's delivered in this movie as well. Saddest thing about this movie is that it was really hard to get into the characters. It was hard for me to latch onto them. I would say that 
that the way this film juggles its characters or the way it fails to effectively juggle its characters is also a problem that translates to the rest of its story and the way that it tries to tell that shit. There are parts of this storytelling that feel very rushed, that feel very crammed, and that feel very ham-fisted. We are introduced to characters and plots before we even have a chance to really get attached to anything and then boom, we're off to another brightly colored set piece. The movie just feels way too rushed. It feels like it jumps all over the place and it doesn't have a consistent flowing narrative and as a result, it's hard for me to really care about too much that happens in this movie. Visually, there is one thing that did irritate the shit out of me and that is the fact that this movie utilized a lot, and I do mean a lot, of obnoxious close-ups. This movie went a lot from obnoxious, like absurdly big close-ups, like where I can see Oprah's boogers. I never thought that I would want to see Oprah's boogers. I'm Don't watch this movie in 3D, please. But seriously, close-ups like I see Oprah's boogers, and then we transition to a wide shot where you have pretty looking CGI. It's a little thing visually, it doesn't really take too much away from the movie, but it did irritate the shit out of me watching it. It's not a bad movie, it's not shit, like I can't say that it's awful or anything, but it is a big disappointment. Visually, this movie looks good, but that's about it. I'm gonna give A Wrinkle in Time my guilty pleasure rating of Smallville. That's yeah, alright guys, I wish I had better news for you, but the fact is, A Wrinkle in Time was... It, 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 it was kind of ass. So I'm going to crank out some more reviews for you guys. I'm going to be reviewing Gringo tomorrow. I'll also be doing a late review for Death Wish and some other films coming up. Stay tuned. Like and subscribe to the Super Fan Show. And as always, if you like what you see, tell me how you feel. And stay tuned to hear more from the Man of Steel. Peace.